In this video, we are going to study the assumptions of crystal field theory. Now, crystal field theory was proposed to explain those limitations of valence bond theory in coordinate compounds. The CFT, crystal field theory, explained coordinate compounds, their bonding and their properties. The valence bond theory also explained bonding and properties of coordinate compounds but though it had some limitations. These limitations were overcome by crystal field theory. Now crystal field theory explained bonding in coordinate compounds com in completely different way as done by valence bond theory. Now we know in complexes or coordinate compounds the transition metal atom or ion is surrounded by a number of ligands. Now according to crystal field theory, the bonding is completely different as explained in valence bond theory. According to valence bond theory, the ligands donate electron to metal. So this bonding was explained by crystal field theory in different way. According to crystal field theory, the whole bonding in coordinate compounds depends upon electrostatic forces. The whole bonding is based upon electrostatic attractions in coordinate compounds. To explain this, it had some assumptions. The first assumption made by crystal field theory was that these ligands which surround the metal atom ion are point charges. That means this ligand have neither volume nor area. And we know that these ligands can be neutral molecules or negatively charged ions. So according to crystal field theory, what these ligands are points and these points have lone pair on them. We have seen so many ligands like water. This is a neutral molecule but it has lone pairs and it acts as ligands in many complexes. Similarly a neutral molecule is this NH3. This also has a lone pair and if we take a charge, negatively charged ligand like chloride ion, it also has lone pairs and electron pair. This negative charge also explains the electron pair and these are lone pairs on it. So crystal field theory said that these ligands are considered to be point charges as we know that in electrostatic attractions we considered point charges for the interactions. So to apply that concept of electrostatic forces, crystal field theory assumed these ligands to be point charges. Now, to explain the bonding, what it said, it said that these metal atoms and these ligand, they are bonded together. Now this ligand can be negatively charged. Suppose we take a ligand which is negatively charged. Suppose this is some negative charge. Now metal atom ion have positive charge on it and this ligand will have negative charge on it according to coordinate compounds. There is transition metal atom or ion which is surrounded by a number of molecules or negatively charged ions. So if we case the case, take the case in which the metal atom have positive charge and these ligands have negative charge, what will happen? There will be force of attraction. This force is electrostatic force because of the charges. So this force of attraction will make this metal atom and ligand to attract each other. What will happen? That this metal atom which is surrounded by a number of ligands is being attracted. This metal atom is attracting this ligand and this ligand is attracting this metal atom. So in this process a bond, they, we can see this as a bond that they will not move apart. They will remain close to each other and we will say that this forces the bond in these atoms, the metal atom and the ligand. So this was the concept of bonding according to crystal field theory in these complexes. In valence bond theory we said 
that these ligands have fully filled orbitals, this metal have empty orbital and they overlap. But crystal field theory says according the, that this metal atom has positive charge, this have negative charge and they will attract each other and this is the bonding. This, that is, this force makes them to remain together and form this complex. Now what if the ligand is neutral? Now we know that in neutral molecules the charges can be induced. Like suppose a molecule is neutral that means positive and negative charges are uniformly distributed all around. Now if the ch a charged particle is brought near it, what will happen? It will induce charges. Now suppose some positive charge is brought near it. What will happen? That all the negative charge of this molecule will come near the positive charge and all the positive charge of this molecule will be repelled by this positive charge and will accumulate at this point. So what has happened that this was a neutral molecule but it has induced a dipole. Dipole means di means two and pole. This negative pole, this positive pole. So a dipole is formed here. That means neutral molecule have become charged. As a whole it is neutral but if we see this portion it is negatively charged and this is positively charged. Whereas earlier it was completely neutral. So same thing can happen in these compounds according to crystal field theory. If the molecule is neutral there will be induced dipole in it. And in ligands this induced dipole the negative charge portion will face towards the metal atom. So if the molecule suppose this ligand is neutral the dipole will be formed here and the negative portion of the ligand will face the metal atom ion and again this type is formed so positive charge and negative charge will attract each other and there will be electrostatic force and hence the bond is formed. So this is how crystal field theory explained the bonding in coordinate compounds. Now the next, the very important concept of crystal field theory which explained the properties of coordinate compounds. Now for this we should know something about coordinate compounds that we know that these compounds have this metal atom or ion. This metal atom or ion is transition metal atom that is D block element. We have seen in periodic table D block elements are present. What do you mean by D block element? D block element by this we know that the valence electrons that means the last electrons the valence shell of this metal atom will be D orbital that means it can have 3D or 4D. That means the valence electrons are present in D orbital. And we know about D orbitals that there are 5 D orbitals. DXY, DYZ, DXZ, DX square minus Y square and DZ square. They all have different orientations in space. Now DXY we consider space to be three dimensional and these are taken according to that only. Now we take x, y axis here. x axis along this, y axis along this. So this d orbital will have orientation in space. Now if this is x axis, this is y axis, it will be lying here in between the axis, not along the axis. Similarly, y, z, if we take y axis here, z axis here, in space, the orbital have this orientation in space. Similarly, we can have x, z, there is some, it will be, uh, this will have same shape like this x and z axis and it will have this shape. So this is d, x, y orbital, this is d, y, z orbital. And this is T X Z orbital. We can see that these lobes. What does this lobes mean? That means the electrons will be present somewhere here. It is not present here. It will be present here in between. 
so this is the orientation of d orbital this d x square minus y square have some different orientation so this is x axis this is y axis and the lobes will be along the axis this is d x square minus y square so we can see that they all have different orientations this is d z square this has some different shape if this is z axis we have this type of shape this is x axis and this whole lobe is present in xy plane with a lobe in z axis so these are the different shapes of d orbitals now what does crystal field theory have to do with this it said that the ligands surround the metal atom and these ligands have negative charge either they are i so they will have the negative charge or they are they have induced negative charge so if there is charge that means there is field that means all these ligands will have their field now if a electric field is present around a metal atom or ion that means that field is going to affect that metal atom or ion in one way or the other now how it will affect this metal atom it said that the whole field of the ligands will affect the electrons present in the metal atom now obviously the external field around the metal atom will obviously affect the valence electrons of the atom now valence electron in coordinate compounds is present in d orbitals and these d orbitals are of following kinds now we know that if the field is symmetric that means the forces the field around the metal is same from all around the world now suppose there is symmetric field that means if we have field around this metal atom in this way now if suppose this is x axis this is y axis and this is z axis the force by field along x axis will be same in the plane of xy and it will be same along y axis and it will be same from minus of x axis and it will be same from z axis so what this crystal field theory says that if this field is symmetric around metal atom or ion then all the d orbitals will experience same force because the force along the x axis is same and it is same along the plane so this lobe and this lobe similarly these lobe all these lobes will experience same force and that means all will react in same way now how they will react if i make the representation of all d orbitals according to their energy now we have d orbitals like this 1 2 3 4 5 6 all these d orbitals are represented so first they were lying in stable position then the symmetric field is applied all they will experience some field and they will react what will happen their energy will be raised now all are experience experiencing the same amount of the force so all will react in same way and all will make their energies higher so energy of all the orbitals will increase but in coordinate compounds the field is not symmetric because here we have considered symmetric field the orbitals have experienced the same force and they have raised their energies in equal amount but in actual case we have coordinate compounds of particular geometry it can be octahedral it can be tetrahedral so if we see that this is octahedral geometry in which the metal atom is supposed to uh, supposed to be present here the ligands to be here 
Now if we take x axis here, y axis to be here and suppose z axis to be here. Let us suppose. So what will happen here? Now the ligands are present here. Now the d orbital of metal atom have their orientations. Some will have their lobes present in the plane. Some will have their lobes present along the axis. If I make it like this, we have that some will some lobes will experience the repulsion or attraction of the field directly and some will not experience this directly because there is no ligand present here. This is head to head attraction and there is no head to head attraction between the orbital and the ligand. That means the force which ligand is putting on the metal atom is higher along the x-axis in this diagram. That means this orbital which has its shape like this. This is x and this is y. So this orbital, d orbital will experience higher force in comparison to these orbitals which do not have their lobes along the x-axis. So what will happen? There will be splitting of the energies. Now those orbitals which will experience direct force will make their energy higher because they will react accordingly. And those orbitals which will not experience direct force, that means they will experience a less field, will make their energy lower. We will consider octahedral and tetrahedral in detail in another videos. But the concept, the assumption of crystal field theory explains this splitting that the energy of d orbitals which were which was same in ground state, in earlier state, splits up into different lengths. This splitting of energy of d orbitals is called crystal field splitting and it varies according to the number of ligands present. That means the splitting will be different in octahedral and tetrahedral. So this is the whole assumption of crystal field theory. This splitting explains the color, the spectra and magnetic properties of coordinate compounds. So crystal field theory assumptions were that ligands are point charges, they have lone pairs and the bonding between the metal atom and the ligand is because of the electrostatic forces and there is splitting of d orbitals because of the field of the ligands and this splitting explains the color, their spectra and their magnetic properties. So this is how crystal field theory overcome with the limitations of valence bond theory.